So we're going to kind of we're going to take a little detour here, and we're going to talk about um, some stuff that I think is is valuable for CPU. Um, and I'm just going to kind of share with you guys <coughs> some of the CPU allocation issues that I've seen, and and what the most common uh, pitfalls are that that people fall into. Okay. CPU is is if managed properly doesn't tend to be a limiting resource in a ESXi host. But if it's not managed properly, then it becomes a limiting resource very quickly. Um, and there's a lot of misconception or, or I guess just misunderstanding about how to properly set up your virtual machines to maximize your virtual CPU. All right, to maximize the, what your cores, what your physical CPU can actually do for you. So. This is where things get a little bit where you have to kind of break your your um, perception, or I kind of kind of this is a bit of a you're going to break the paradigm of the way you think about CPU has got to change when you start to virtualize. Like if you have an exchange virtual machine and it's being limited by CPU, and let's say you have an exchange virtual machine with two virtual CPUs, uh, what are you going to improve or possibly harm performance by bringing it up to four virtual CPUs, by giving it an additional two virtual CPUs. It's hard to say. You could harm performance by adding virtual CPUs. You could definitely harm performance. And I would actually say more often than not, if you're giving more virtual CPU to a virtual machine, you're going to slow that virtual machine down. And we're going to talk about why right now. So <clears throat> here, here's what I'm here's what I'm talking about. Let's say we have a virtual machine that has. Let's see. Let's put one up at the top here. This is our virtual machine with four virtual CPUs, right? A virtual machine that we've created. Maybe this is our Exchange server with four virtual CPUs. And here's another virtual machine. I'm going to make this a different color. And this virtual machine has been given two virtual CPUs. And let's say that both of these virtual machines are being uh, housed on a uh, ESXi host that has a single quad core CPU. All right. So here's how this is going to work. We've got two virtual machines, each with varying amounts of virtual CPU assigned, and they're both going to be sharing the same quad-core CPU. All right, so let me just draw my little grid up here. Bear with me for a moment. Okay. Now we've got these two VMs that are sharing this, this virtual CPU, and or this, phys this physical, these four physical cores. Here's core one, core two, oops, Core three and core four. That's our quad core. And uh, what these, what the kind of vertical represents is time slot. So here's time slot one. I wish I would have put, I wish I would have time slot two. Time slot three. Right. So uh, from top to bottom, we're moving forward in time. This is time. Okay. So here's how this is going to work. If our, if our quad core or if our four virtual CPU virtual machine needs to do something and needs to execute some commands, it's going to go ahead and grab four cores. It needs four cores to operate. Because this virtual machine has four virtual CPUs, if it wants to do anything, if it, want to ex if it wants to execute any commands, it needs four cores. So what happens if this virtual machine with two virtual CPUs also wants to execute at this particular point in time? What's it going to have to do? It needs, it needs, two, two, uh, it needs a time slot on two cores itself. It's going to have to wait for the next time slot. 
And now this quad core CPU is saying, well, I still got stuff I need to do. And so, yeah, it's like standing in line at the deli, <laughs> right? The, the quad core CPU virtual machine is going to have to wait until the dual core is done. He's going to have to wait until the next time slot. And then the dual core is like, well, I'm still not done either. I got more stuff to do too. I guess I have to wait for the next time slot again. As they're waiting, as these virtual machines are waiting for each other to get out of the way, this is quantified in a measurement called ready value. Ready value infers this is time that a virtual machine is waiting for a CPU to be available. That's like the exact opposite of what it sounds like. It's not ready. The CPU is not ready. Ready value means time waiting for CPU resources. So th is this reliant on the number of cores or processors set in VMware or how many? Both, Daniel. So like if we, if we think about this diagram right here, let's say that we, we said, let's say, okay, you know what? We really only need two virtual CPUs on this virtual machine on the top, right? We've still got a quad core processor, but we bring that one down to two virtual CPUs, right? So what's going to happen? So now that we've brought the virtual machine on the left down to two virtual CPUs, guess what? The virtual machine on the right doesn't have to wait anymore. He's not waiting for, oh shoot, I hit the wrong button. Bear with me for a moment. Sorry guys, I hit the home home button. That happens at least once per class. The home button's right next to my delete button. <laughs> Sorry, bear with me while I bring us back there. Okay. The virtual machine on the left isn't waiting anymore. He doesn't have to wait for the virtual, or the virtual machine on the right doesn't have to wait for the virtual machine on the left to finish executing. He can execute right away. Right? They're each taking two, two cores at the same time, so neither one of them have to wait. Right? The virtual machine on the right that used to be quad core is waiting less too. They're both waiting less because there's more cores available for everyone. And those ready values are going to drop, drop, drop. Um, so to answer a couple questions, Jessica, yeah, the way the monitor to see if this is happening is we're going to get to that shortly, but to watch your ready values, to watch your performance charts and see if your CPU ready values are increasing. Yeah, I can tell you when I, I uh, right, but Windows can sleep processors as well. Um, if it's not using the processor, if your virtual machine is not using the processor, Daniel, then then you're fine. Um, but if the processor is in use, that's when you have this. So if a virtual machine has four virtual CPUs, every time that virtual machine executes anything, it's going to tie up four cores at that moment in time. I'm not sure, Daniel. I don't. I don't think. I think it needs four slots no matter what, because you're setting that up on like the virtual machine level. But I can't. I can't say with 100% certainty. But I. I'll, let me check on that. I, yeah, I'm not really sure. That's a good question. Um, never had that question come up before. I'm pretty sure you're still tying up those four, those four cores at once. I'm. I'm going to say I'm like 95% sure. But uh, let me say, what if Windows? Let me 